from the Orleans Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas for the Las Vegas Open PBA Power Rankings, looking for his 33rd national title. In the first match, his opponent will be seven-year pro John May in search of his first national crown. In third place from Mesa, Arizona, Michael Haugen Jr., also looking for his first career title. The number two seed, Jeff Lizzy, his only tour win came back in 1992. And our tournament leader, Ryan Schaefer, who won his first two titles last season and is looking to continue his winning ways. That's our field for the Las Vegas Open on ESPN. that have already tasted victory on the tour and one of them is Ryan Schaefer and he is our defending champion. Ryan Schaefer, the year 2000, had a career year. He won twice, made 11 telecasts, but he's ticked off he didn't get Bowler of the Year honors. With a win tonight, he could get back on track for that coveted award. Well, that coveted award was won five times by our number five seed. That is Walter Ray Williams Jr. And Randy, he told us before the match that he felt he was lucky just to get into match play competition and felt even luckier to get into the finals. What a great match this morning in position round against Brian Smith. Brian Smith needs the first hit in the tenth to make the telecast. Leaves a solid nine. Allows Walter to get in. But Walter Ray wins. Junior creates his own luck. Last year in the fall, he made six out of seven telecast. We call him the fall guy. Today, with a win, he wants to be known as the all-season guy. And we got to mention one guy we want you to keep your eyes on. That is Jeff Lizzie. For the last couple of years, he has been in the top 15 on the tour. Jeff Lizzie is way overdue. Last year, he made four telecasts, but he hasn't won since 1992. With a win here today, he could jumpstart him into the career year he's been looking for. Absolutely. Now, it has been a difficult week for the players. Not so much the pattern of the oil on the lanes, but really the oil itself. 37 feet of oil. Uh, the problem the guys are having is not the length or the pattern, but it's this is a new oil that we're using this year. It's a combination of last year's oil and the year before. And what's happening is the guys are having trouble with their balls hooking early. So the rolls that are working are more of a spinning roll. Johnny May... Jeff Lizzie and Ryan Schaefer have that type of role. Gets the ball to skid through the front and hook in the back end. Walter Ray and Michael Haugen just do it with pure speed and power. Now, he, Walter Ray Williams making his 124th appearance on television. Leads the PBA in that category. One of the players likened the oil pattern right now to almost like there's a speed bump in the middle of the lane. Explain that. Well, uh, they're not really sure what the ball's going to do when it gets halfway down the lane. Uh, that first shot there... Great shot. Walter leaves a ringing 10. But what, what the problem is, is they're not really sure what it's going to do when it leaves her hand. And that's evident with the scores we had this week. The lanes are real tough. Now, Walter Ray picks up the spare. He says he doesn't have a whole lot of confidence coming into this final. He said he has really struggled the last couple of weeks as we look at John May, the 28-year-old, out of really out of Iron Station, North Carolina. Mr. Lucky, one of his nicknames. But my broadcast partner calls him Johnny Spin Biscuit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's the way to open up for the young guy. This guy, Johnny May, he can bowl. He's got 18 regional titles, and he's a player. Still looking for his first title on the tour. Made the TV finals in Chattanooga last year. Finished second. He was the tournament leader going into the finals, but he ended up losing to Parker Bone in the finals. How about that start? What does that feel like? You're making your second TV appearance and you strike the first two frames. Well, yeah, I spoke with John earlier today and he said the thing that he has to do is get over the nerves. Watch this rotation I'm talking about. Look how it looks like it's a little more of a spin and look how hard it drives through the pocket. Now for the second frame, Walter Ray leaves the 10 pin hanging. You'd have to almost think that John May comes in as the favorite. His ball has a little more loft and maybe a little more spin to it. Well, I don't know how he could ever be the favorite bowling against Walter That's Ray true. Williams Jr., but, um, you know, Walter Ray just hit the pocket uh, two shots in a row and left 
two flat ten or a ring and ten and a flat ten. So what Walter needs to do now is make the spare, which he did, and he needs to start carrying when he hits the pocket. 32 PBA titles. He's been touring for 19 years. Also has 32 second place finishes. He owned the number one spot for 84 consecutive weeks before Chris Barnes knocked him out of that top spot last year. About three times the 10 pin will not go down. You know that. <laughs> All you can do, I guess, is smile. Well, 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 in practice. Uh, that, I mean, it doesn't look any better than this. Nah. And you're asking yourself, well, what's the problem? And I don't know. He thought he had it. Yeah, it was a great shot. You know, the problem, what, what happens when you start hitting the pocket, when you hit the pocket a lot and you don't strike, is you start trying to carry, and that could lead to bad shots. Yeah, so he starts frames one, two, and three with spares. John May opened up with a couple of strikes. John May beat Walter Ray Williams earlier today. He had a string of seven strikes en route to a 258, but he told us that's one player he didn't want to play on television. <laughs> Caught a fortunate break, tripping the four out, leaving the nine pin. Easy spare for John. He'll move left. He'll flatten it out a little bit, throw it straight and hard. Notice how his wrist snaps around the bottom of the ball and watch the drive. And he's like, okay, that's all right. And a great break, tripping the four pin out. Routine. Routine with the spare ball. So he opens up strike, strike, spare as an 11-pin lead over Walter Ray Williams. You can see 49-38 is our score. We are bowling in the fourth frame. John May's doing exactly what he needs to do. You know, get over those early frame jitters. He started off with a double, made a good shot there, left the 9-pin. Looking to take 21-pin lead. in light, gets a little bird dog messenger on the 10. Nice shot. Great pin action. That's why you have rotation. Walter Ray Williams heads into frame number four, trailing by 11 pins to the number four seed, John May. Walter Ray, nickname of course, Deadeye. He said the key to the match tonight was repeating good shots because he's thrown so many bad ones this week. Well, you know, he thrives on tough conditions. And he's just mentally so tough, and he credits himself for hitting what he's looking at. And he gets his first. You see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. He leaves a weak 10 on that lane, makes a slight adjustment to carry after leaving three ring and 10s. Gets a great break trip on the four pit out. And now we got the smile. Walter Ray's brother John in the audience. Walter out of Ocala, Florida. He said he was thinking about just throwing it hard at the 7 8, said, but he still didn't feel comfortable about doing that. That time the 10 cooperates. Just like I said before, this guy creates his own luck. He's unbelievable. And that's why nobody wants to bowl him on a telecast. Not quite, I got it. This ball's going right through the it. face. Right through the nose, should have left the big four. Something comes across, six goes into the ten. What an oh, awesome break. Man. Now he only trails by one pin. And you put your hands in your pocket and you walk away. He's like, oh, I knew yeah, I could. No problem. Yeah. Anybody can strike in the pocket. Well, John May with a one point, one pin lead. Leaves the bucket. And the only good news about this is that he's working on a strike so he doesn't lose any count. However, the bucket's not the easiest spare to be shooting at. The man who grew up idolizing players like Guppy Troop said tra traveling with him his early years on the tour was one experience I'll never forget. Anytime you travel with Guppy, it's an experience. That's the way to pick up the spare. And by John's reaction, you can tell he, he's quite relieved making the bucket. The way he makes it, now a lot of guys throw the ball straight at the spare, but he throws a hook ball to get that back pin out the eight pin. He's like, Whew. okay. Well, how important is it from a strategy standpoint? You have the number one player in the world in Walter Ray Williams. He comes up with two strikes. Now you've got to get back into it. How important was it for him to pick up that spare? Well, one thing I've learned bowling against Walter Ray over the years is you don't want to give Walter Ray an opening. You open the door, Walter Ray will walk through it. By making the spare, he still maintains a one pin lead. Shot 
on the right lane, looked a little lazy that time. He made sure he got his fingers involved in the grips, and he just ripped the grips right out of it. Watch the rotation on this shot. And that's rotations, what gets that pin action. Look at the action of the head pin going to the sidewall, and he likes it. John Mayo, victory will obviously move him up in the rankings. He's currently 44th. Oh, oh the pesky 10 pin oh, for the fourth time, time in sense. this match. Seems like the only way, the only time Walter wow. Ray strikes is when he doesn't hit the pocket. Some of his best shots in this match have been ringing tens. Possible 247. John May right now, maximum 259. And this spare no problem for Walter Ray Williams Jr. Well, he has four spares and a couple of strikes so far. And John May now up by one. Walter Ray bowling in the seventh frame. Check that he's now down by two, Walter Ray Williams Jr. is. He said the premium on this match, shot making. And he needs one right now. Well, he got a little distraction. He's going to step back. What he needs is he needs to carry when he hits the pocket. Two strikes that were kind of marginal and four really good shots that were all ten pins. There you go. All right, Walter. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't go dead flush and you'll strike. Well, he's come from the number five seed to win a PBA event, but young John May now with the lead. We'll be back. Williams trailing by two pins to John May. Walter Ray has won five Player of the Year awards, but he says he would like more. I'd like to be Player of the Year again. Um, I've got to, you know, keep on top of my game. I'm getting a little older, obviously, 41 now. Um, but uh, I think as long as I'm physically fit, which I, I basically am, I could probably take care of my body a little better, work out a little more. But uh, as long as I don't have any uh, major injuries, which uh, in the last year and a half hasn't been a problem. Um, I think I still can be, but uh, watching some of these kids, the way they throw the ball, it uh, can be a little intimidating at times, but uh, I do realize that if I play my game, I, I'm very capable of throwing a lot of strikes against them. And he obviously has in his career, he has won at least one title the last eight years, and if he comes from the number five seed and wins tonight, he will tie Mark Roth for second all-time in titles. Just a credit to his talent. John May now in the seventh, up by two. Strike here, take 12 and lead. Well, it comes in light, leaving the two pin, and it's uh, two shots on the row, in a row on the right lane. Ball hangs a little bit. Watch this ball drifting right, and just doesn't have the bite on it to get up heavy enough on the head pin. Very fortunately, it doesn't leave the eight pin and the 10 pin, leaving the two eight ten. Would have been disaster at this point. Leaves it very easy spare, just the two. Now, there's so much riding on this for young John May because if he does get the victory, Randy, he gets into the Tournament of Champions. So there is some pressure on him. But talking to him today, he's such a low-key guy. He does all the basic things. He loves to play golf on PlayStation. He's single. He water skis. And it didn't seem like the pressure was getting to him. Yeah, you know, and this guy can really bowl. He doesn't look like a whole lot, but, you know, 18 regional tells us this guy is a player. Oh. That time he leaves the seven. Bad break, ball comes in light, takes care of the five pin. Leaves what we call a shaker seven. Spare here to maintain a two pin lead. I'm sorry, one pin lead. Changes balls to a ball that goes much straighter. No problem on that spare. <laughs> Now, Walter Ray, the right lane, a strike here, he'll take a nine-pin lead. Needs a hold. Oh. And it didn't. He had an opportunity to walk through the door, couldn't get in again. Well, and he leaves a really tough spare, the 3 9 10. and the problem with this is covering the back pin, the nine pin, especially when the lane conditions are the way they are. You, In order to make this, you need to get the ball to the right of the three pin, but you got to have hook in the back end to get the ball to cover the nine. Won his first title back in 1986 at the Peoria Landmark Lanes. Spare maker, what he needs to do? And that's the trouble, you know, you get you catch the uh, three pin too heavy, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't deflect off of the three and take out the ten. 
That was very, one, tough, very tough spare. That was Sorry, one player told us yesterday, round objects meeting round objects, you don't get the same pass a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. Now, Walter Ray, ninth frame, must strike. That looks like the same exact hit that early on in the match he was leaving 10 pins. Lanes break down during the course of the match. All of a sudden now he carries a corner pin. Thanks, guys. John May, right lane, ninth frame, strike here. Maintains a 13-pin lead. told you this guy can bowl. He came in light the last two shots on that right lane, and he made sure he got all of that shot. And the lead is at 13. Tenth and final frame for John May. One of his bowling goals was to make the TV finals. This is his second. Trying to pick up the first win. The determined young man from North Carolina. I think he's feeling it right about now. Eight spare, he's a winner. Be his first win on TV against the great Walter Ray Williams Jr. What a way to start out with your first win, huh? Well, it's de it's it's definitely not a given yet. Tough lane conditions, anything can happen. Eight spare or nine on the first ball is a winner. Needs the hook. Ooh. Well, he got the nine. And he will advance to round number two. So John May of North Carolina advances to round number two. He will now take on the number three seed, Michael Haugen Jr. And we will have that match right after this. And we welcome you back to the third stop on the winter tour. And match number one is in the books. John May takes advantage of Walter Ray Williams going nine spare. The first three frames, he wins at 216, 214. And John May now advances to round number two. Our number two seed of the tournament is Jeff Lizzie. He is standing by now with Randy Peterson. Randy? Thanks, Ron. Um, Jeff, you know, the lanes look like they're loosening up a little bit compared to what you've been bowling on all week. Does this change your strategy in any way? Yeah, I think the, with an hour of practice, I think uh, they dried up a little bit more. I think I'm going to have to go around them just a little bit more than I did all week. They're probably, they might be a little high scoring, but uh, as long as I go out there and make 10 good shots, I think I'll be in a title match bowling Ryan. Ron, I think it's his time. And you may be right. Of course, Jeff Lizzie started out this tournament. He led after the first three rounds, dropped down to third place in the fourth round, and moved up to second in the fifth round. But this is match number two, Michael Hagen Jr., the 34-year-old out of Mesa, Arizona. The number three seed going up against John May, our number four seed. John May started out strike, strike in his first match with Walter Ray Williams Jr. And he's got Walter Ray's problem. Uh, Randy leaves the 10. Yeah, that was a great shot anyway. Gets up there and leaves a ring in 10, but that's all right. He's going to get just uh, switch balls, goes a good ball that goes a little bit straighter, and cover this 10 pin with no problem. Johnny Spin Biscuit. <laughs> you like that, don't you? Oh, that's great, ain't eh? Johnny's a great oh, guy, we, too. We've, we've got to come up with a nickname for Michael Hagen Jr. He goes with the Danny Wiseman retro look, and he told us before, he said, you know, I had this shirt hanging up there, and this was my TV shirt. Yeah, and he's got that Viagra gel working. And he leaves the 9-10, and he was so excited about this final. Leaves the 6-10, gets a good break. This ball's... This ball is going left of the head pin, but leaves himself with an easy spare for him. He'll throw it straight and hard. Remember, Ron, always throw the ball straight at spares whenever you can, and never, ever look directly into the sun. Words of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, from Chief Meteorologist Randy Peterson. Now, what Michael Haugen needs to do is he needs to get over the first frame jitters. You know, he's had a tremendous amount of pressure on him already this week, needed a great showing to continue on this winter tour. 
and solidify a sponsor. Come on. Yeah. He will be animated, and you'll be able to hear everything he says. John May started out strike strike in the first match. With that 216, you see he finished with six. Three of four on single pin spares converted. And the big thing only one open frame. And that was the 10. That's wide. Ooh. Now, is that a case of the oil and the, the type of pattern we were talking about? Because the ball didn't seem like it moved like it did in the first match. That was a case of a bad pitch, and John will be the first one to tell you that he missed that. He got it going right with no hand in it, and the ball just didn't have enough on it to get it back to the head pin. Now he needs to get this ball left of the two pin to throw it right over to the 10. Look out. Great try. Well, Michael Haugen will have an opportunity now to try to jump through this. You can see how close it came. You know, I think great strategy on Michael Haugen's part, making John May finish on that right lane. The first match, John had a, a couple of problems where he did come in light, left the bucket, left the two pin. Now this time he comes in light, leaves a 210. Right back on it. Well, he likes the left leg. Yeah, and Haugen knows that. He said, you know what, guess what, you can finish on the right lane. Pretty good strategy for a guy that's just been touring four years for Michael Haugen. Third time on TV, previous two, he was seated fifth and fourth. He said just being seated a little bit higher doesn't change his outlook one bit coming into the finals. Left again. Now, one of the problems he said he had, Randy, we may have seen it there, he's worked hard on slowing everything down. Well, you know, when, when you're a down-and-in player like Michael Haugen is, you tend to get fast and you tend to throw. And that was definitely pulled left, leaving the 6-7. Got to get the ball right at the 6-pin, slide it over into the 7. Made it! Made it! He got it! What a great shot. Watch this ball throw the six right over into the seven. And he's still clean, maintaining a 13-pin lead. What a huge shot. Well, he knows what just being on the television final means to him. A young man not backing down. That's all right. That's a good shot. He hits the pocket. He wants to stay around the 1-3. And if that's, if that's his worst result, leaving a seven pin, now watch this ball. The head pin's gonna go to the sidewall, and it just misses the seven. Leaves him with an easy spare. Neither player seems like they're in any kind of groove right now. Well, you know, you gotta remember that during the, uh, during the practice, and the start of the matches, and throughout the match, the lanes change. And remember what they bowled on all week. This is no league condition. This is one of Absolutely. the toughest conditions the guys have seen in a long time. And they bowled 48 games or 42 games bowling on stuff that where you have to basically split hairs. He got that one. All right, leaves in the week 10. Now you can see on that shot it looked like John Mo John May moved in a little bit and then go quite as far right with the ball, leaving the flat 10. We've seen Walter Ray Williams Jr. leave the 10 on that right lane. That seems like it's going to be the problem lane today. You know, and I think that the the the, uh, the number one thing you, you stuff to remember is the guys try to fill frames. Lane conditions are tough. Fill frames, avoid opens. Well, John May already has an open in the second frame. Won 46,000 last year, over 2,000 this year. His average just over 220 so far this season. And you can see that he's led the Southern Region in points the last four years. And as Randy mentioned earlier, a slew of regional titles. How about 18? Yeah, John's got a great, creden great credentials. Uh, nothing yet on tour, but he's, he's, uh, he's going to be a factor out here. Again, coming in light, leaving the two pin, which was the, the good break. But you can see that all of a sudden, John's having trouble hitting the pocket, where was, in the first match, he didn't. And right now the gears are the gears are turning. He's trying to figure out what he has to do to get to the pocket. John May only one strike finds himself down by 13 pins as Michael Hogan Jr. hits the frame number five. Michael needs to get up on the right lane and make an adjustment. In my opinion, he's gone through the nose both shots. 
needs to change that. Come on. There you go. And when the lanes are tough, I like the down and in or the direct shot. Michael uses two shoes that have rubber soles. He doesn't like to slide, and he likes to go straight. And that's why he was a factor this week. The lanes were brutal. Mm -hmm. well, we were talking to him earlier today, and the fact that he throws the ball so hard, he felt at times it was an advantage for him. Yeah, he like you know the tougher the lanes get, the better for him. Couldn't talk it in. Well, he, now you talked about throwing it hard. You heard that? He wanted that ball to tip in the back end or hook a little bit more in the back end. And the harder you throw it, uh, the less friction you're creating on the lane. Fortunate just leaving the 2-8, but that ball didn't have any bite because of the ball speed. Michael Hagen Jr. holding on to a 13-point advantage in match number two of the afternoon with John May. We will have more from Las Vegas right after this. Along with Randy Peterson, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to the Las Vegas Open. Match number two, John May, the number four seed against Michael Hagen Jr., our number three seed. And this is John May. Johnny May going with a ball change. All right, he went to a ball change. Looks like a ball that hooks more. Moved into the center part of the lane. Not going quite as far right. A lot of these players, there's a paddock in the back. Players like Walter Ray Williams, he doesn't like having 20 balls in the paddock. He says he likes to have eight balls. What do most of the players have just standing by to use? I think they bring their whole arsenal out. It's a one game match if you lose and they don't want to be empty-handed. He goes to make a ball change here. He didn't like what he saw with the ball he was using. And let's see if it pays off or it does. Two in a row for John May. What a great adjustment he made. He knew after five frames he only had one strike. Look at that balance. What great balance Johnny May has. And watch the action of the head pin. And how about that reaction? He's back in it. Michael Haugen's best finish, 11th, right here in New Orleans last year. Is that called answering the bell? Oh, great shot. He knows what he has to do. Johnny May makes a ball change, gets up there and doubles. Michael Haugen right back on it. Great shot, good balance, stays down on it. Look at that opposing, holding that finish. He is a tall, lanky young man. Michael Haugen is. Strong guy, very athletic, keeps himself in great shape. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah! Ain't gonna be that easy to do. Come on. Come on. But he's making it look easy. Watch this. This is called high flush. Ten in the pit, that ball's right in the heart of the one three. And he knew it. Haugen is up 13 pins on John May. Oh! Thought he had his third in a row. Oh, and what a terrible break. Solid eight on a double. And just a perfect shot. And watch this ball. This is just absolutely perfect. He knows it. And probably the worst mm. break in bowling. And we've seen it a number of times this week. Trying to collect his thoughts. Now yeah, John may try to get his ball to come back, and it has. All right, he needs to make this fair and get back on it. There's two frames left. Anything can happen. Needs a hook. All right. You scared me, John. <laughs> Spare in the eight for John May. Now the PBA's website is loaded with all the latest news from the PBA Tour. The site includes up-to-date and complete tournament results, feature stories on PBA players, a chat area with a variety of topics, and a chance to vote for one of seven players to compete in the battle at Little Creek. All that and more at www.pba.com.
Foundation frame, ninth frame. Yeah, Come on. With a little wiggle. <laughs> oh, my. Same hit he carried frame before on the left lane. This time, the five, five pin just stands there and laughs at him. Now, watch the head pin go to the sidewall. And they just get all tangled up and don't come over and get the five out and look at his reaction. He's like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, if the air condition would have come on, it probably would have knocked it over. He's smiling as he's shooting the spare. <laughs> I well, guess that's all you can do on that. You know, and he knew he knows that he made two great shots on a double. He made the right he made the right adjustment, switching balls, and it, you know the pins just didn't cooperate. Michael Haugen with a 13-pin lead steps up in the ninth. He's working on a double. Hit it! Oh! How do you like that one, Richie? How do you like that one? Wow! That increases the margin to 25 pins. Watch the pin action here. I've seen people carry 10 pins before, but this one gets knocked out right at the bottom of the pin and falls forward. And how about that reaction? Oh, yeah! You love his exuberance. He needs nine to put this one away, and he would advance to the next match. One. Look out if this, if this guy gets lasered in. We have a winner in match number two. Michael Hagen Jr. advances to match number three against the number two seed, Jeff Lizzie. But our top seed is Ryan Schaefer, and we'll introduce you to him when we come back here on ESPN. Match number two is now part of history. Michael Haugen Jr. guaranteed his best finish ever on the PBA Tour. He takes match two with a 228. John May finishes up with a 193. And Michael Haugen Jr. now advances to take on Jeff Lizzie. Just a reminder, the next couple of weeks, the PBA Tour will head east. The PBA National Championship at the Southwick Lanes in Toledo, Ohio. Airtime, 12.30 Eastern Time next Sunday. Then on February 11th at 12.30 Eastern Time, Parker Bone the third, the Empire State Open. And February the 18th, also at 12.30 Eastern Time, the Tar Heel Open as we head to Burlington, North Carolina. Join us for all the PBA events right here on ESPN. Ryan Schaefer, our top seed, picked up his first victory ever right here in New Orleans last year, his first of two on the season, and it meant an awful lot to this young man. In his 14th year on the tour, Ryan Schaefer became an overnight sensation. The one-time Rookie of the Year won for the first time and did it twice. A Player of the Year candidate, he still finds his fame new. Being on TV 11 times, people and kids especially, um, they know my name and they walk up and when they say, Mr. Schaefer, can I have your autograph? And they really genuinely want your autograph. That's the greatest feeling in the world. Ryan's free time at home has been coaching the Elmira Free Academy bowling team. First of all, I, I think it's great that there's high school bowling because if you look at any junior bowling program, that's usually when you lose kids. I mean, kids will bowl from when they're five until they're about 12 or 13, 14, they get in high school and all of a sudden they don't want to bowl anymore. Um, I really stress to the kids that they have to do their schoolwork first because if they really want to bowl, they have to do their schoolwork or else they're not going to be eligible. Um, secondly, I want them to, to practice repetition when they bowl. I tell them they can have any style they want. It's The game today isn't really about what's mechanically correct. You can get away with a lot of stuff if you do it the same every time. And I also stress spare shooting because a lot of kids don't pay any attention to that. They just want to throw strikes and they don't throw a strike in their practice and they just press the button. Well, here is a young man that has a responsibility, he feels, to also help in the community. I think, though, that also what we see here is there are not only college bowling teams, but there are also high school bowling teams. Yeah, and I think it really shows the passion that Ryan Schaefer has for the sport of bowling. We still have Jeff Lizzie. He is the number two seed out of Sandusky, Ohio. He is standing by to take on Michael Haugen, Jr. We'll have that match coming up in a moment. The 
second consecutive year, the tour has come to the Orleans Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center. This is the second year of a three-year deal with the Orleans Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center. We thank all those who have made this so much fun and enjoyable the last couple of days. And we are set for match number three. Michael Haugen Jr. taking on Jeff Lizzie. And during the break, Michael Haugen is pumped up. He is having fun. Yeah, you know, he's got a game under his belt, and he's uh, he's talking the talk right now to Jeff, and I'm not sure if it's uh, gamesmanship or if he's trying to get uh, Jeff's mind on something other than the job at hand, but let me tell you something. Jeff Lizzie is very strong mentally. He'll have to do a lot of talking. Come on. Yeah! Come on! Well, his words of advice to Jeff was, let's have some fun. Well, if you strike, if you throw strikes like that, you'll have a lot of fun. And here is Jeff Lizzie, the 35-year-old, as you mentioned, out of Sandusky, Ohio. One of the newlyweds on the tour, married December 2nd to Kathy Doran Lizzie, who's on the women's pro tour. Great opening shot by Jeff Lizzie. One of the strongest bowlers physically out on the tour. A lot, lot of weightlifting. He played football and motocross. And there's his lovely wife, wife Kathy. Who has a victory on the tour, won the 99 event in Pittsburgh at the Princess Lanes in Pittsburgh. She and her sister, I think, won it last year, if I'm not mistaken. Carolyn. Excuse me, Ryan. Yeah, she's a she's quite a competitor in her own right, along with Carolyn. Now Jeff Lizzie working on a strike, going for a double. Likes to model himself after golf pro Fred Couples. Very even keel. Needs the hook. Oh my. And there is the sister. Carolyn Doran Ballard, also on the women's tour. And I asked Jeff, I said, who's going to be more nervous? And he says, well, it's not going to be me. It's definitely going to be my wife. Well, take a look at this ball, how far right it goes, and watch it peel back. And that's the power and the strength and the rotation of Jeff Lizzie. The six goes to the wall and chops the ten and a half. Michael now going to keep the match all even. It's not good. And he was right. It wasn't. You, you heard it uh, You heard it from the man himself. That ball was left out of his hand, thrown hard. The man who started bowling at the age of five. Haugen had a good first match. Six strikes. Multi-pin spares converted two to two. How about that? No open frames. That's the key. Yep. I'll get to him. How about one? And then just as we say that, he leaves the second open. Seven. And again, when the lanes are tough, you, that's the stuff you have to avoid. I think when you're playing in a television final, too, everybody knows something bad could happen and usually does. Overcoming it. Does he have what you would call maple moxie to overcome this adversity? Right We're going to find out. You know, he he, uh, he didn't have any pressure put on him in, in the uh, match previous to this. And uh, even though it's only uh, two frames into the match, there's a little pressure now. Come on. That's the way to answer that. Well, nobody can win two in a row. We saw Walter Ray Williams losing John May, won the first match. May could not win the second match. Now we see Michael Hogan Jr. He's having trouble. And I think uh, Ryan Schaefer's going, okay, I like this. Right, exactly. This is good. You know, at any time you're a term tournament leader, it's always a, a good it's about to be in the unenviable, unenviable position. One of the things you were talking about as he gets the old extra roll when you were talking to Jeff about getting loose, especially his arms. And he was really trying to tell you that he doesn't want to try to muscle the ball up there. Well, this ball looks like it was left to target and it's going to hook high, leaving the 3 6 10. But the problem here is the pin rolls over and takes the six out, makes the spear much more difficult. He's going to go to a ball that goes much straighter, a little boxing glove inside there. There you go. One of the more interesting balls you will see on the tour. We see them painted like soccer balls, like American flags. Never seen one with a boxing glove in there. I can't wait till they come out with one with your face in it. <laughs> but this pair is covered perfectly. Get the ball to the right of the three pin and have it deflect into the 10. And Jeff Lizzie leading by 22. Jeff Lizzie, his uncle a great bowler, comes from a family of bowlers. His uncle was Jerry Lizzie, you might remember, won the Peterson Classic back in 1970, back in Chicago, and it was worth a total of $42,000, which was huge back then. Needs the hook. Great shot. And he knows it. You see Jeff making a little clinched fist there. Watch this ball just peel to the right, floating. Look at the rotation. Look at the label just rotating. Here's Kathy talking it down the lane. She's like, come on, come on. 
Push, push, carry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, get up, get up. And Michael almost got it, but he left the 10. Again, you know, that's a good shot. He hits the 1 3. Leaving the weak 10 could be maybe a speed thing. That ball needs to drive a little harder through the through the pocket to get that 10 out of there. Well, he's got his mom looking on, also his grandparents, Betty and Blackie Wollenshuk, his mom, Vicki Pinter. Big moment in this young man's life. There's his grandparents cheering him on. And he said to him during the commercial break, he said, you know, no matter what happens, I'm finishing third. And, you know, it's something to build on. And it's not like he, he's lost this match yet. I mean, we're only in the fourth frame. He's come a long way. You know, he, uh, he struggled a lot last year. Third tournament of the year, he is in position to win his first title. Well, his mom, Vicki Pinter, also in attendance, but for the second frame in a row, he leaves the 10. 10's been the pesky pin today. Yeah, and I think the adjustment for Michael Haugen is, is just speed. I think he needs to just back her down. Which we talked about just a few moments ago about overpowering some kind of pins. Jeff Lizzie won national title, his career title at 92, Lake Zurich, also his best year ever, won over $80,000 a year. Led after the first three rounds, lost the lead last night. Said he stayed composed and level-headed over it. Yeah, this, the strongest part of this guy's game is his mental, his mental game and his mental toughness. Look at that shot. What a great shot from Jeff Lizzie to take a 43-pin lead. Went high on that, on that lane, the, the shot before. And a lot of times what happens, Ron, a bad shot, you get back to that lane, you overcompensate, mm -hmm. throw, pitch it out the window, which is real easy to do on this pattern. He steps up there and goes dead flush. Well, they're probably cheering him out at the Star Lanes in Sandusky, Ohio, the bowling center that his family owns. Twin brother John looking on. <laughs> Peel. Hit it! And he takes the 10 out. He's got a triple working. How about that shot? He flashes a smile. How about that shot? Watch the action of the head pin. It's going to go to the side wall. And here it comes. It's looking for the 10. It just knocks it out. How about that reaction? Number one, baby. Bring it on. Excellent crowd on hand for the Las Vegas Open. Match number three. They are playing for the $25,000 first prize. And right now, Michael Hogan Jr. finds himself down 43 pins to Jeff Lizzie. Ryan Schaefer, our number one seed, waiting in the wings. The winner of this match will go on to play, Ryan. Michael needs to back it down. Don't you think about going from like warp 10 maybe to warp 8? Yeah, and you know, the problem is, you know, he likes to throw it hard. And what happens when you start backing her down or start doing something you're not accustomed to doing, it tends to make... Get the 10 out. Yeah. There you go. It, it, but it, what happens is it leads to sometimes bad shots. That wasn't a bad shot, however. And notice that that time the 6 went to the wall and cut the 10 out. Two shots previous to this. The ball looked like it was in the same spot. However, he left week 10. Watch the action of the 6 pin, second to the right. Tomahawks to 10. Well, he was worried about slowing things down for the finals uh, earlier today when we talked to him and spent some time with him. But this young man is so charismatic. He's got an effervescent personality. I think those type of people, maybe it's hard kind of to back off a little bit. Well, you're right. You know, he's very personable. He's, uh, he's, he runs a uh, high octane and he throws rocket fuel. Uh, hold, hold, hold. Well, I think he's resigned himself to his fate in this match. Well, and I think it's probably a little premature. Uh, bowling on tough lane condition, Jeff Lizzie, even though he's uh, you know, going at a 220 pace, I mean, anything can happen. Especially if you put some pressure on your opponent. Right. Yeah. But the key is putting the pressure on the opponent. Yeah. I mean, spares will not put pressure on your opponent, I would think. No. And here's Jeff Lizzie. You know, and the other thing, Jeff's got a big lead, uh, five frames for him to fill. The one thing you don't want to do right now is get lax. Hello. You called it, Professor. It, it looked a little. It looked like it was a little left and maybe a little soft. And that, I think, that lane is the problem lane for the guys that are going around it more. We saw it with Johnny May, and now you see this ball didn't look like it got quite far enough to the right. 
And of course, you know, not a real good break leaving the four six seven. And this is this shot here is just getting the count. Go for the four seven and go on. But that's why I said it's too early yeah. to be thinking that this match is over. Well, Michael Haugen left the second frame open. Now Jeff Lizzie leaves the seventh frame open, and now he has to think about it. And one of the things I think Jeff learned, he's been in five TV finals, made four shows last year. He said he learned that he has to take his game to the next level, and this is the case in point where he has to take his game to the next level. He's on pace for the 243. Went from a 43 pin lead to just 18. That needs to hook. Oh my, did you see how far back that ball came from? That was in the weeds. That was hanging over the gutter. Watch this ball, this, look, this thing is looking for the gutter. And watch it just left turn. Wow. Okay, he had two boards to spare. He go, yeah, he, he was on the 34th and a half, I think, though. A little bit straighter ball, not a good result. It's a good thing it's already over. I'd be quite upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It, <laughs> that definitely wasn't a good break. He's hit the pocket the last six balls. Only has two strikes to show for him, and now a really bad break leaving the 4-9. How about a little hook? Come on. <laughs> well, I think he mentally, I think he may have checked it in right after that last ball. So he has left a couple of frames open. Leaves the second, leaves the eighth open. Okay, so it went from 43 to 18 to 42. Yeah. But the key was he did not put pressure on Jeff Lizzie. That's going to strike. Maybe not. Well, you know, he, he's thrown quality shots. He's thrown quality shots, they just haven't struck. He's actually hit the pocket more times than Jeff Lizzie in this match, mm -hmm. yet he only has three strikes. Jeff's got six with a three-bagger and a double. And that's the difference. Well, $7,000 goes to the man who finishes in third place, and it looks like Michael Haugen will be the man that finishes number three. And Jeff Lizzie on the verge of playing for the title here in Las Vegas against Ryan Schaefer. Let's see what kind of adjustment he makes on this lane. That'll do it. That looked like a pretty good adjustment. Hey, the ball's on me and everything. Huh? We have a winner. So Jeff Lizzie out of Sandusky, Ohio. His wife can smile. He can only look forward to Ryan Schaefer. He'll be playing the number one seed for the title in Vegas right after this. Earl Anthony second to Walter Ray Williams Jr. in TV appearances as we welcome you back to the Las Vegas Open along with Randy Peterson. I'm Ron Thulin. Let's recap and see exactly what has happened so far in match number one. John May, the victor over Walter Ray by two pins. But John couldn't hang out in match number two. Michael Haugen Jr. gets his highest finish ever as he advanced to match number three. But Jeff Lizzie, the victor, 243-170, the second worst score of the week for Michael Haugen Jr. But we had, had did have some great bowling during this week. Let me tell you about some of our other finishers this week. Danny Wiseman from Baltimore, Retro Man, him and Michael Haugen, I think they're using the same tailor. He had a chance to make it into the finals. He was close. In 10th position, Hall of Famer, the great Brian Voss from Atlanta. And in 14th place, the reigning PBA Player of the Year from Claremont, Florida, Norm Duke. Last week's champion from Indianapolis, Mike Albee. And a little hometown flavor from Henderson, Nevada, Dave Wadka. And those are the players that were in the match play competition. And we are set for our finals. The defending champion, Ryan Schaefer on your left. Jeff Lizzie on the right. And this is kind of an interesting final because they both pretty much take the similar lines. Yeah, they're both going to be playing the same part of the lane. Jeff Lizzie looking for a title he hasn't seen in over eight years. And what a great way to start. Well, Randy, he did not miss in that left lane in his first match. That's right. He, I'm sorry, Ron. He struck every ball on the left lane. Yeah, and, here's Ryan Schaefer. And, you know, like, like we've seen in previous matches, looks like the right lane's the tougher of the two lanes. Ryan gets his choice of where he wants to finish. Picks the left lane to finish on. Now, the defending champion. Yeah. 
everybody has had problems with that 10 pin on that right lane. Yeah, but you know, that's that's all right. That's a good shot to start off with. Notice the deep inside angle of Ryan Schaefer. And look at this power. That ball going from the from the middle of the lane all the way out to about the seventh board, ripping back, leaving a ring in 10. He switches to a ball that goes much straighter. He's going to flatten this out and throw it straight and hard. It's a slide. All right. Well, prior to winning last year here in Las Vegas, he held the Tour's record for most money earned without having a title, and he told us that that Las Vegas win was a huge relief. He called it the monkey off his back. Yeah, you know, after he won, he, he started to believe in his talent. He, you know, he, he believes that he can win, and he belongs out here, and that was the biggest thing for him. He's two and nine last year on television in finals, but the two wins, he was the number one seed. He did not lose when he was the top seed. Looking at the pins again. This ball comes in light and leaving an unusual spare, the 4-8. And the problem with this spare is it's very choppable. You want to make sure that you cover both pins with the ball. Ryan is a good spare shooter, and this should be a problem for him. You know, we heard him talking on the feature about the high school players to pick up the spares. He said after his rookie year, it was a rude awakening, and that's one thing he had to learn how to do, is pick up the spares. Yeah, well, you know, early in his career, Ryan had the big strike ball and the big hook, but he was real wild. Ten strikes for Lizzie in his last match, only one open frame, converted one of the splits, and his score was a big factor, 240s. What a great shot. You see that ball peel back from the right side of the lane. Six pin going to the wall and doing the job. Deep inside angle, a little bit further right than Ryan Schaefer's ball. Look at the rotation. That is pure power from a guy who likes to do a lot of weightlifting. And he likes it. Well, golf and tennis also part of Jeff Lizzie's hobbies. Going to the ball that matches his wife's outfit. Good call. <laughs> so far. Strike here for 22 pin lead. Come on! Oh yeah! That ball is dead flush. And one of the things when you and I were talking about Jeff Lizzie, and you, you stressed to all of us a number of occasions that his mental attitude is his strong point. It, it sure is, and that's the difference between Jeff Lizzie now and Jeff Lizzie of, of uh, yesterday. And look at that ball. That You can't throw it any better than that. And here's the cheering section. Watch their reaction. Oh yeah, there's, that's, that's a reaction coming from two people that knows what it's like to Absolutely. strike for, for a living. Ryan Schaefer, who bowled so well yesterday, won 12 of 16 matches, averaged over 230. Interesting style, uses his top hand. Yeah, his setup is very unusual. He likes to get his hand on top of the ball and put all the weight into his right hand. Keeps the feel of the weight of the ball in his hand throughout the entire swing. Last year's victory took the desperation out of his game. Said, not worrying anymore about being on TV. He knows it'll come. He really gets up underneath it. And when he gets to the bottom of the swing with his hand in that position, he can really put the stuff to it. Wow, did you see the action that there? That had some serious moves. That ball was even further right to the shot before on that lane and just ripped back, carried a Wally. He's back in action. Look at how far out that ball went to the fifth board and just splattered him. And he's running it out. He goes, all right, we're back in the game. It's game on now. I got me my double. There you go. Like Walter Williams Jr., he's working with new equipment, which has been an adjustment for him. Yeah, but, you know, and funny about uh, Ryan. We'll get to that in a minute after the shot. Never had a chance. Uh, never got the ball far enough right. Leaves the 310. He made this, uh, he made this in the last game. And obviously right now, this is uh, something that he doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to have an open frame. Watch this ball just looking high. Never really got it far enough right. He was working on a triple. Mm. And the fourth will remain open for Jeff Lizard. All right, well, you know what? It's an open frame. He's only down by two. He needs to regroup on the good lane. You know, these conditions being as tough as they are, the last game that he bowled, 240s, phenomenal. 243, a phenomenal game, given the uh, the circumstances with the conditions being so brutal. He needs to now suck it up. It's gut check time. The scores have been low the whole week. Oh, 
Peel. All right, great shot. Coming back up after that open frame. Now, alluding back to Ryan. Ryan did go through an equipment change. Uh, said it, he struggled. Take a look at the strike by Jeff Lizzie. See, he got that ball further right. That ball's dead flush. Took Ryan a couple of weeks to learn his new equipment. Tough to do at home when you're bowling on on the league shot where every ball looks about the same. Come out on tour, these balls are going every which way. That ball's dead flush. Well, he said he was more tentative because of the new equipment. Well, one of the hot topics in the bowling world these days is the new American Bowling Congress Sport League program. Sport bowling is being offered to those bowlers who wish to compete on the most challenging of lane conditions like we have right here. The PBA will be an active participant with the ABC in promoting this program. Look for Sport League starting in your community this fall. I said to Ryan, you know, it only took you three weeks. You're leading the tournament again. He says, yeah, but Mike always using new equipment. It only took him two. Always competing, <laughs> isn't it? He's great. You know, Ryan's struck, actually struggling a little bit on the left lane, which, that's interesting. you know, every, we, every, we kind of feel that that's the good lane. I think the players feel the same thing. He's been coming in light every shot. He struck with the same kind of hit in the last frame. This one just doesn't quite catch enough of the head pin. He's leaning and he wants these. Oh, come on. Oh, all right. Well, you think with the, with the loft he has on his ball, this would be an advantage for him. Yeah, I think he just needs to uh, start really getting on it and making that thing hook back. Mel Schaefer gets the spare, and he has an 11-point lead over Jeff Lizzy, but there are still a lot of frames to be bold. We'll have them after this. Advantage, he has completed six frames. Jeff Lizzy up for his sixth frame. Jeff Lizzy, who started bowling at the age of three, said he had to hold the ball with two hands, ran from the back of the lanes, and just tossed it, I think, like all of us started. Well, he's made drastic improvements since then, obviously. Right now, what Jeff needs to do is he needs to get the ball further right on this lane. Not quite as far out as he needed, obviously. And again, going right through the heart, leaving a split. 3, 6, 7, 10. I don't think the average fan understands how difficult, first of all, it is to bowl on these conditions, but second, to bowl a player like Ryan Schaefer, and you have something like that happen, and you've got to just flush it completely from your brain. Right now, what he's trying to do is pretend he's shooting 310 and throw that three pin over into the, into the seven. Too heavy on the three pin. Jeff opens up, six frame. He also had the fourth open also, so he's left a couple open, and that is difficult to overcome. Lizzie, his possible is 234, the maximum he can get. Trailing by 23, he needs to start striking right now. Mm -hmm. He comes in on a hot streak. He won his last four matches in match play, including one over Ryan Schaefer, where he bowled a 229. Get over there. Not enough. Well, it was a good pitch. Unfortunately, he didn't carry the 10 pin. Right now, Jeff needs to use that mental toughness and that maple moxie to get back into this. Watch this ball rip back, catch a piece of the head pin. Head pin's coming across looking for the 10, but it just doesn't find it. And that's his first miss on that lane. That is. Well, he'll settle for the spare, and now the door is open up. Jeff Lizzie's wife can only clap and hope because the door is open up for Ryan Schaefer. A lot of preparation goes into the finals. What did Ryan do to relax today? He did his laundry, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, he's real superstitious about his clothes. He uh, wears the same outfit every day, same outfit for practice sessions, same outfit for pro-ams, same outfit for first, uh, first round of qualifying. And he wants to close the door. His mom, Vicki Schaefer, looking on. She sees it coming. And it, ironically, what he told us, too, which, which sort of surprised me, he said making the TV finals for this event is just as important as when he won at Wichita. Why is that? Why would he, you'd think that the win would be more than just making the finals? Well, I think the big thing is, uh, getting back to the equipment issue, you know, he told me earlier that he was splitting more than a gymnast with this new stuff, and he was trying to figure out, you know, what these balls do. And again, it only took him three weeks. Here he is. And, you know, to, to be honest with you, I think he's still figuring it out. But on this pattern, this condition, this week, he's got it dialed in. He is a bulldog competitor. He is intense, and he's working on a double. 
The man who in 1993 almost gave it all up because he went 17 tour events without a check. Watch the rotation on this shot. This ball going out to about the fifth board. And watch the action of the six. Ten pin looked like it was going to stand for a minute. The vortex from that shot just sucked it right off the deck. And now, now Lizzie trailing by 33 pins. Must strike situation. Oh! What a terrible break. Finally got the ball in the pocket on the right lane, leaves a solid nine. Watch this ball. It's going to go right by the nine pin. Oh! oh. Mm. And that's just a terrible break. Under these circumstances, the last two shots he threw were pretty good shots. Well, we were talking about the margin of error, and if you hang it out too far to the right, it's not going to come back. But the margin of error for Jeff Lizzie in this match has been very, very slim. Yeah, and I think you can see that the lanes have changed a little, just enough. Where Jeff pinches it just a hair, it's going to go high, and the risk, the risk that you don't want to run is getting the ball too far to the right. And that's what made the lane conditions so tough this week. You had to go right, but if you went too far right, it was a big, ugly split. If you got it a little bit left, it went right through the face. Great shots. A little confidence builder maybe for Jeff Lizzie. What a great shot that was. He knew he needed it. Stepped up and delivered. Now Ryan Schaefer can put this one away. I'll tell you what, folks. N there's nobody tougher on the lanes than this guy. This guy's a bulldog. Two marks, he's a winner. And he knows it. He's a man that's had to learn a lot more than just the power game. And he prides himself for that of not letting his mind get in the way of what his body can do. Oh, he worked the 35th board, but he just couldn't get it to go. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty good break, too. There, he almost left the blowout 7-10. 10 fell late, just leaving him with the 7-pin spare. And watch this. 10-pin's going to be standing there for a while. Oh, and then someone cuts it, chops it down like, uh, like chopping down a little tree, and Ryan's like, okay, all right. And you know Ryan's big thing, uh, and his keys to success this week, uh, what, what he told me earlier was filling frames. And by taking that 10-pin, cutting it out of there, he's made the spare and filled frames, doing exactly what he's trying to do. He has not left an open frame. Jeff Lizzie has left a couple open, the fourth and the sixth. Nine on the first ball. Ryan Schaefer's a winner. And he keeps his record perfect as the top seed in the tournament. Three wins, no losses as the number one seed. Oh, oh my. Don't close the book yet on this chapter. And there you have it. You see a ball that looks like it's going to try to turn up and go through the pocket. And this ball just never grabs a lane, leaving the 2 4 8 10. Currently number four in the computer rankings. Walter Ray Williams Jr. is the number one ranked player in the PBA Tour. Second in scoring last year, third in earnings. Oh, oh my. The first open. Doors open. Jeff Lizzie has a chance to win this tournament. He needs a double and eight to win his second title. First one was back in 1992. Told us today he'd love to end the drought tonight. He is on the verge of it. Look at those eyes. One down. What a great shot. One more strike away from winning his second title. He steps up, puts that solid nine out of his mind that he left on that frame the last time he was up. That's the kind of that's the kind of uh, mental game that this guy's got now. He, he says, you know what, solid nine, so what? Pressure is building on Jeff Lizzie. And his wife looks like I think it's a lot harder on her. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're 100 times more nervous than Jeff is, I guarantee it. He needs a strike, plain and simple. Mm. Looked like he got just a little soft. But what a great finish. Carries that solid nine. It's a whole different game. Jeff Lizzie just a couple of pins away from picking up his second victory. This is how close it was. Uh, I mean, you know, 
just just a fraction off. That ball goes high. She's out of her seat. And just a great performance from Jeff Lizzie. Remember this name, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Lizzie, one of the fine young bowlers, a very athletic young man. But the winner is Ryan Schaefer. He successfully defends his title in Las Vegas and keeps his record perfect as the top seed. We'll talk to Ryan after this. To the Las Vegas Open is Ryan Schaefer is our champion as he defeats Jeff Lizzie in the finals. And for the second year in a row, the defending champion walks home with the trophy. And standing by with the man who finished in second place, Randy Peterson, with Jeff. Jeff, just an outstanding performance. Uh, tell, tell me, what went through your mind when Ryan gave you the, the opening, and what happened the second ball in the 10th? Well, you know, I gave him the match early when I split, and then he gave it back to me. And I got up in the 10th thinking that, you know, you work hard all, all, all week long. And you know, my hands. I got up there and made the, the, the first shot. And when I threw the second one, I thought it was clean off my hand. I thought it was going to strike. Well, I'll tell you, if he carries a ring in 10, solid 9, 7th and 8th frame, it's a different ball game. Ron? All right, thanks very much, Randy. Ryan, you go 6-2 in the 10th. What were you thinking at that point? Because you opened the door for Jeff. Well, Jeff usually beats me. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not very good against Jeff in match play, so I really thought he was going to strike out. He's a great player. And... Uh, it was no question in my mind he was going to strike out. Now, you told us that last year when you won here, it was a huge relief. It kind of put you on a pedestal with the rest of some of the players who have won on the tour. What does this victory do for you? It just uh, puts me that higher. Um, I didn't bowl good the last two weeks. Uh, it gives me a lot of confidence for the rest of the year. Now, here comes the good part of the night. Robert Paravia, the director of bowling operations for Coast Resorts. You've got the money. Ryan. You gave us a lot of drama there at the end. It was very exciting. I'd like to thank all the participants that came here to bowl, all the crowd that came out all week, and on behalf of the Orleans Hotel and Casino, congratulations, and here's $25,000. Uh, I'd really like to thank the Orleans for hosting. Uh, it's the most beautiful uh, bowling center in the world, and I'd like to thank Storm Bowling Products for making the best bowling balls in the world. All right, congratulations, Ryan Schaefer, the champion of the 2001 Las Vegas Open. And it has been a very special week. Just a reminder, there is more bowling coming your way next week right here on ESPN. 12.30 Eastern Time, the first major tournament of the year, the PBA National Championship from Southwick Lanes in Toledo, Ohio. For my partner, Andy Peterson, I'm Ron Thulin saying so long, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.